Whether it be two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, you know the drill. It does not matter what you drive. This is your All-Terrain Nation, and I'm your host, David Voigt. And today, we have something special, near and dear to my heart. I am interviewing my father. And you might say, Dave, why would you interview your father? Well, for one, my dad's 80 years old, man, and uh, he's lived a lot of life in the car world. And uh, I wanted to get a taste of uh, his early life. Now, we go through in this interview, we kind of go through the whole spectrum of, uh, of his car world, but... I wanted to specifically know about his first rides and 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 just get a feel for what it was like to uh, to kind of be a kid in the uh, the 50s. That's right. My dad would have been he would have been in around 16. He would have been in the late 50s, and he would have got to experience like the hot rod generation, the pure hot rod generation, not what we think of tuner cars now or anything like that. We're talking, you know, just just V8s or little straight sixes, and they were doing with what the best they could with them, and uh, and we get into that a little bit. So, as my father being a boomer in that early hot rod generation, I thought it would be fun to uh, to kind of stroll down memory lane with him, and uh, we'll just go from there because I had a lot of fun doing this, and uh, like I said, if you watch it, that's awesome. But this one's just for me, so enjoy. What is going on, All Terrain Nation? Today we have a special treat. We have my father, Ralph Boyd, as you can see. And if you, the gab of talk, you hear me do it, this is where I got it from. This is Mr. <laughs> Honest that's going to do this. But what I wanted to do today was talk about our first rides because this generation, my father's generation, was kind of that hot rod generation. And you guys were kind of the pioneers. It obviously, it came from California, but you guys seen what they were all doing and all wanted right. to do hot rods. But I kind of wanted to get into and uh, talk about the first rides. And so, Dad, welcome to the show. Thank um, you. <laughs> um, what exactly, what, I know you were driving probably from 10, 12 years old because oh, yeah. you lived in a, a small farm town, so you got to do a lot. But what was your first experience in a car? The first experience that you can that you can kind of remember was well, I used to sit on my dad's lap and drive the car whenever whenever yeah. he would be driving, and then my uncle Dave later on when I got a little older, he had a motor scooter with a sidecar on it, and I used to run it up and down the road and one thing and another when I was probably about eight or nine years old. And of course, then work for the farmers, drive tractors, and all right. That stuff. And of course, Davis, who I'm I've been named after and in, in such, but um. I know you used to talk about he would he would tune that thing up in the winter and he was he was a handicapped person too right yeah so like it was a big ordeal especially in in that time period because there wasn't a lot of yeah. care given to handicapped people they were just kind of forgotten about a little bit so for him to he got all into that right yeah Uncle Dave's hands were like this and he couldn't straighten them out and he said in a setting position he couldn't get up and walk and he had a little trike he called it and he rode around on it shoved himself around it. And he could build cabinets. He built his own motor scooters. He could do wonders things. He worked on watches. Right. And uh, but but I'm assuming some of that was where your love of vehicles probably came oh, from, yeah. right? Well, everybody. Uh, whenever I was in school, every kid loved vehicles. Right. So, what was kind of your first love of a car? Well, my first the first car I really loved was a '57 Chevy. That right. Was, that was my that was my ideal, but. I had my first car was a 52 Chevrolet four door and I didn't like it because back in those days you didn't have four doors that kids wanted yeah. a two door yeah, it had which, to be cool which is now a complete opposite kids want four doors because they want to carry their friends in and not have to be yeah. pushing them in the back seats yeah. but but so Greenville being a small town you probably didn't get to see a ton of like there was basic probably cars because it was a small farm town right yeah. it was a small town but they had a what they call Broadway and at the one end of Broadway was a traffic circle. It had a fountain in it. And then you go down the other end, end, and we had a place where we could turn around and we could go back. And kids would be sitting on their cars along the side of the road, and we'd be driving down, blowing our horns and racking them off. See, we could, right. And uh, then uh, the fun of the night was whenever somebody, well, I never did get to do it, but whenever somebody would get down at the uh, traffic circle and uh, they get out of the car and throw soap in the in the oh yeah the, and the suds that come out all over the road and one thing and another but that was kind of our generation what we did we went to dances and one thing and another and and uh, so kind of like american graffiti yeah like i just like it so so but the car car meant everything though as a oh, kid yeah. right when i when after i got my 57 chevy i had to get a coat to match my chevy 
<laughs> and you had to be cool. Really? And uh, so kind of like a varsity jacket, but you had to match your car. Yeah, you had to you had to have it match your car. And then we uh, we all had uh, clubs. And on our back bumper, we had uh, little chains that hang down with a plaque, and they'd tell the name of your club on it. Okay. What was the name of your club? Uh, I can't remember anymore. <laughs> Who knows what it might have been. That means it's probably something very ornery for him. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. <laughs> I did have an ornery sign, but that, 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 <laughs> but that wasn't it. So, so you said what your first car was what? My first car was a 52 Chevrolet, and I was telling him, 85 uphill or downhill, it didn't matter. That's as fast as it would go. And I was, after I got it, and if I go to Greenville, I'd be ashamed of myself because I'd be the only one running around in a four-door car. Right. And uh, Even though you had wheels, which was probably still an ordeal, you, oh, just, yeah. you were still kind of like, I don't have a two-door. Yeah, you're cool. But uh, then whenever I got my 57, it wasn't a two-door hardtop. It was just two-door. But I had it lowered, and I had skirts on it and one thing and another, and, and uh, it was a pretty cool car. And then I got a 55 two-door hardtop. Now, you had to have roll down the windows in the summer because that was cool. <laughs> right, right. So, but like today we have all these aftermarket manufacturing. You guys had to just completely do it on your own. You had to figure everything out to how lower these things and everything, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you could take and uh, you could buy lowering blocks. Okay. And, and uh, then uh, we got... Uh, you could get a Hot Rod magazine. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was our big deal. And in Hot Rod magazine, they'd have places where you could order fender skirts or whatever else that you wanted to do with your car. Right. So, but it was probably pricey, though, I would imagine. It's probably what? Probably pricey. expensive. Yeah, well, yeah, and, and we didn't make that much money. And uh, so you had to save. But if you, I like to, to party a little bit on the weekends, and if you wanted to party and stuff, then you spent the money of yeah. partying that you yeah. really need to spend on your car. Right, right. So it's definitely a catch-22 of, of you want the car because you want to go cruising, but yet to go cruising, you kind of want to go party a little yeah. bit. Yeah, so definitely a catch-22 on that. So how how old would you have been? When your your first car, how old would you? I'm assuming I've been 16. 16? Yeah, well, um, I got my driver's license. That, that's another little story. When I went to get my driver's license, I was in my dad's 53 four-door, <laughs> and uh, we was in it, and I went up, and it's a stick shift. Well, back then, with a stick shift, you had to parallel park, and if you got a stick shift and you got a policeman sitting beside of you, your foot gets yeah. nervous, yeah. and I made it. I don't know how I made it, but I made it. And, uh, was it on the was it on the column or an actual yeah, stick? On the column. Oh wow, which and, that, that had to be even worse. And uh, but I learned. Dad had a blue flame engine in his car, in his truck, and we outrun new 56 Pontiacs and everything with that old Chevy six-cylinder. And the Chevy six-cylinder, I don't know what, but it was better than most six Chevy six-cylinders. Yeah. And uh, I learned how to speed shift it, and it sounded like automatic. <laughs> I can make it go. So it probably would have been a three-speed that you would have had? Yeah. And yeah. But see, first was in and down, and second was over and up. Well, you could put your hand on and just shove yeah. and get a second and then straight down for high. Okay. Okay. And how was reverse then? Uh, re reverse was taking, pull it towards you and yeah. then... Uh, oh, okay. So you couldn't mess that up. No. No, no yeah. you'd, have, you'd have a rough time messing that up. So did you ever rebuild these cars? Oh, yeah. The, because I, cars back then, mileage like today, we get 100,000 miles and they're just broke in. Oh, yeah. In, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, you didn't get before you had to rebuild no, cars. You got, you got 100,000 miles on your car, you bragged on it. Yeah. That was, that was a good car. Yeah. And uh, no, we, we, we fixed up a lot of them, put V8s in them and stuff. My friend, he had a 57 Chevy and it just had a little two barrel engine in it. And we went to a place called Kettlersville to the drag strip. Mm -hmm. And when we went to the drag strip, he got in a race with a 56 Olds. And the Olds beat him, and now the, a power guy had only got two gears in it. Right. Well, this Olds and him got in this drag, and when they took off, the power guy sat there and spun its wheels, and he beat him off the line. Otherwise, that Chevrolet would have cleaned him. Yeah, yeah, wow. And uh, talking about 57s, whenever uh, my friend, Denny Stallman, he, he was going to get a new 57 Chevrolet, and I went with him and his dad to get it, and we went to New Bremen, Ohio to get it. And whenever we got over there, his daddy was named Hupp, and Hupp, he took out his checkbook, and he wrote a check for $2,300 for that new 
Chevrolet two-door hardtop, and it had extra. It had a power pack engine in it. Right. And uh, but that's what it cost back then. Did you have to order? Was that car an ordered car? No. Or well, I it probably was. I'd say. It I was going to say was. if it was probably specialty a little bit, you but, ordered them. But normally, see now that was a big deal back then too. Right. A big deal is if if they come out with a new car, mm -hmm. man, we loaded up and we headed to the dealer to, to check that thing out and see. Right. And and then when they come out with the '58 Chevy. Us kids got mad because the 58 Chevy was a bigger car than what the 57 was. Right. We thought, boy, they're ruining our cars now and one thing and Which another. is funny because the 57 is just always held. That's the time period car you want, right? Yeah, see, 55, 56, and 57 were really the same body. Yeah, 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 and, just a little tweak But the 58, they had a four, 348 engine in them. And it wasn't it wasn't no good at all. It was just a grandpa's car. Yeah. But then they came out with the 409, and of course the 409 would fly. Right. And and a lot of the dealers got them in because the kids wanted one. Right. And then I got to liking the 58 because not only was it was kind of a kid's car, but yet it was it was smooth. It was cool. We yeah. Call, we called it back in. You know, if something was real nice, we might say, "Boy, that thing was smooth." Was could you tell back in back in the early days of because the 40s 50s are really like that's the when dealerships that was them coming into their own sort of and before that I mean, you know i hate to say like model t stuff but the cars were very very basic and by the the late 40s you were really getting into yeah. modern features ride quality could you guys tell a difference instantly like like within just the base and then you get like a bell air could you just tell that was a different car well no like the the 150 was the cheap one and uh then the 210 and then it was the Bel Air, and they were really the same car. Right, and but so they, they had the same rides. And so you never noticed that it was any different. No, it, ride? it was the same car. Only thing, the 150 was a lot cheaper than the rest of them, mm -hmm. and a lot of the kids would take and they would buy the cheap one, and they but they would put all the goodies in in that cheap right. one. Right. And then they would fake out somebody <laughs> because that was an old cheap car. You'd fake them out and you would take them out. Yeah. And we had a a street in Greenville, and we marked off a quarter mile on it. And uh, the CBs come out, and so one kid would get on one end of the street, another kid get on the other end of the street, and we would say it's all clear. There wasn't no police with it. Right. Then you could drag. Right. And, right. And, and uh, so we had some pretty good times, and then we had a Frisch's Big Boy out the end of town, and you raced from the Frisch's Big Boy back into town. Right. And so did did cops harass you as kids in these? Oh cars? yeah, the cops would get after us, and, and sometimes you get stopped. Yeah, and and uh, they they throw the book at you. Really? Then, oh yeah, and then sometimes you get one, he'd stop you, and he'd be laughing. He'd tell you not to not to speed anymore. Yeah, but to slow yeah. down one. But thing he another. probably a younger cop that he he probably well, yeah. wanted to be doing what you did anyway. Yeah, they was out doing whatever we done, and, and so. <laughs> right. So your first car, how long did you kind of have that car? I didn't have it too long, uh, probably, probably maybe a year or two before I got my 57. What was it, just because you wanted the 57? Yeah, or? I didn't want that, I, it was too slow and it was ugly and, and <laughs> I wanted a cool car. Right, and of course, I'm going to put a p picture up here, you had a, what was the car with you and your dog that you were? That was the 52. That was the 52, yeah. your first car? Okay, yeah. so how long did you have your 57 then? Well, I had, I don't know, I had it. Four or five years, I guess. Really? Which yeah. was a long time for a vehicle, right? Well, yeah, well, it was, but still, it was cool. Even in even in five years, you know, nowadays, a yeah. 57 shoe is cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, what was uh, what was the determining factor for getting rid of that car? Something newer came out? <laughs> no. It, uh, I took and didn't have no money, and the engine was going bad in it, and uh, I wanted to, to get rid of it, but I couldn't afford to buy something else. And so I had to do the best I could to keep it running or right. one thing or another. And then finally I got mad and I thought, I'll bet if I roll this thing, take it out and upset it, and, <laughs> and then the insurance would buy me a new one. Right. So me and this kid, Kenny Parton, we went out to, to uh, this side road and I took off and flying down there, I was going to roll it. And when I did, it didn't roll because it was, <laughs> it, it was uh, lowered. Yeah. And it just slid around and went in the ditch. <laughs> And then we went and got his dad's old tractor to pull it out, and we didn't know it. The tractor didn't have no water in it. We burned every wire off of that tractor. <laughs> so you did the complete opposite of what you should have. You yeah. tore up the tractor, not yeah. your car. So then later on, and then I got to working better. And 
It, it sounds funny to trade from a 57 to a 55, but the 55 was cool. Yeah. It, it was, it was real. It, and it, it was one, it had a straight shift with overdrive. Right. And, and uh, you could go 70 mile an hour down the road and it just would be like it's idling. It, Did, was the 57 always from day one the cool car we, when that came out? Because oh, it, yeah. had the, it had the wings and 50, stuff on well, it. Well, 55, 55 started it. Right. And and see for fifty five Ford they could, they come out with a what they thought was a cool car too right and then in fifty six Ford they come out with what they called a Crown Victoria and uh, it, we always called them Easter baskets because it had a chrome deal over the top right but they come out with that thing and uh, so we went from there where they was uh, fighting back and forth trying to have the best or the prettiest car right and how come Ford was never in your in your wheel wagon as a kid. Uh, I, Ford wasn't just then. I was a Chevrolet man. It, was it was it because your dad was your dad a Chevrolet my, guy? My dad had Chevrolets. My grandpa had Chevrolets. My uncle had Chevrolets, and uh, then I'd watch NASCAR and the Chevrolets would win, and yeah. so Chevrolet was my car. Oh, okay, okay. Um, um, now I know you creeped into Buicks and Oldsmobiles at one yeah, time too. I had, I had the fastest car I ever had was a, uh, I think it was a '67 Buick. It had a. Uh, I forget what the engine was. It, it was. It don't seem like it was a big one, but anyhow, it that Buick, if it got hot out in the summer. Now this is an old Buick, and, you, and the old Dynaflow transmission. <laughs> this weren't drag transmission, but you could take that Buick at 70 mile an hour and hit passing gear and squeal the tires. Wow! And 120 mile an hour, you could do this with the hood on it. Not yeah. how fast it go. What What do you think zero sixty times were back then, though? Because they're nowhere near what they are now. No, no. My what, what would you thought a, a zero to sixty time would have been fast? What eight, nine seconds, maybe? Do, oh, <laughs> uh, well, in uh, I think it was fifty seven. A fifty seven Corvette, seven seconds. Yeah. To zero to sixty. Yeah. Which now is that's nothing. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a slow SUV now. Yeah, but you got to you got to take in consideration it was a little bitty engine. With oh sure, sure. Well, modern technology is no. just going to be way different. Um, so over the years, you've seen cars just like completely change from just being like very basic, like yeah. radio was an option when you, when you were a kid. To yeah. now, if you don't have a, a a big screen TV in the middle of your vehicle. You don't have much going on. You drive computers now, and back then you used to drive cars. Yeah. But uh, I could, whenever back in my day, I could tell you, if I was sitting in a room and a car went by, I could tell you what it was. Right. Because the sound of it, I could tell that. And see, that's how, what, that's how far we were into cars. Mm -hmm. And I could tell you if one of my friends went by. Right. And, and I could. Well, I remember as a kid when you had your Silverado because I knew when you turned the corner coming home, especially if I was in trouble, I knew, I knew this because you had glass packs on that thing. <laughs> yeah. And I knew as a kid, you better go hide because dad was getting closer and uh, especially my grades in school that was that was probably my, going to get me in more in trouble than anything but i knew when that truck turned the corner and uh that that i was in trouble basically but so i remember when we were when we moved to tennessee what did what was the car that you guys had we had well we had that uh it was a 73 buick electra and then we had the uh, truck yeah but these things were getting the the cars themselves were boats i remember many times us was that the brown buick that uh -huh. you had i remember many times going back to ohio yeah and, and i tell this story to the kids here but i slept in the back window these the windows yeah. were big enough they spread out and the, the the back area was so big like i would sleep in there and and jeff and Tina would fight over the seat, and whoever didn't get the seat ended up in the floorboard. But you still were somewhat yeah. comfortable. Yeah. And and you know seat belts. We didn't worry about seat belts and no. all that. Like you would. Like now, my my Bronco yells at me is if I don't put the seat belt on, and it really don't want to go anywhere until you put the seat belt on. But we yeah. didn't think of it that way. But but yeah, I remember. Yeah, the Silverado because you had just gotten that before we moved to I Tennessee. I bought that new up, up at uh, Greenville. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, that thing you went through a few motors in that truck, and uh, went through two of them. I had a, it had a, uh, it came three hundred five, yeah, three hundred five is what it came out with, and uh, then I put a three hundred fifty in it, and the three hundred fifty, I outrun a bunch of people with that. Yeah, clearly you can tell drag racing is always he because I remember as a kid you always talking about Mustangs and stuff lining up next to you when you get off at work. Yep. 
and <laughs> you were going to race them. Yeah. Um, but, and that poor thing, like, a lot of your vehicles had to up north rust away, right? Had what? Had to just rust apart because, well, yeah. they were thicker metal back then, but I'm sure well, rust was... up still. in Ohio, they saw the roads. Yes. And so, they, and if you still look at cars from up north, you'll see them rusting out. Yeah. But down here, you know, very seldom they ever saw the road. Right. Well, I remember, I remember the, the 77 just rusting to pieces yeah. and like holes in the <clears> side of this vehicle. And, and I always, I always tell my kids, like, we grew up pretty poor. Like, till I got into probably late middle school, early high school, like, we did the, like, you weren't going out and buying cars, no. like, like, because we had moved from Ohio down here, and that was a big, and big anyway, expensive. About, about cars, about family cars. Yes, yes, which was the Buick, and then I remember a uh, sky blue a Cadillac, right? Yep, and that was, that was one in between cars, one I could afford. Right. And, and we was coming back from Ohio, and it kept, the, yeah, the, the muffler was leaking, and it was pumping. Put, uh, the fumes was going up in, into the car, but we had the windows down, and then the muffler caught the uh, carpet on fire, yeah. and finally the engine blowed, and we just coasted into Jack Young's junkyard, and I left it sit there and right. called him the next day. Well, I, I remember coming back from Ohio, because I remember it being warm in Ohio, but there was snow in Tennessee, yeah. and we were lucky there was snow, because you had to pull over, and we would grab snow and throw in the yeah. floorboard. Yeah. I, re I remember that quite a bit, yeah. and didn't Jeff end up with that car for a little bit? No, uh, Jeff had the Buick Brown Buick. Oh, okay. okay. And then uh, you got the Buick Skyhawk. Skyhawk, yeah, yeah, your '85. And um, go, let's let's talk about that a little bit. So, you've always been a GM guy. Yeah. Oh, I mean, always. Like, I had a full like, truck for two I, weeks. I bought an, a '97 F-150 when I still lived with my parents, and I got the stink eye from this guy because he was not going to have any Ford sitting in the driveway. <laughs> and I was still living at home with this this truck, but you ended up driving it and thought it was an okay vehicle. But um, I remember you guys buying a Nissan Sentra, or at the time yeah. it would have been a Datsun Sentra. It was a little big thing. What What made you go from these big cars to that little thing? Well. Gas mileage, gas was high, by, by, higher than all get out. And this was and, 83, I believe. Uh huh. Yeah. And like some dummy, I bought it, but I forgot I had a family. <laughs> <laughs> and whenever we get in there, it looked like a bunch of a bunch of sardines in yeah. a can. Yeah. And, uh, but it did get good gas mileage. <laughs> but you didn't you didn't keep that car very long. Though, no, did you? everybody kept pulling out in front of it, and then Tina rolled it. Yeah. And uh, so. We got rid of it, and then I got that Skyhawk, I mm -hmm. think. But you wanted, uh, there was another Buick you oh, wanted. Oh, yeah. That, there was a, a Buick, uh, it had the V6 in it with the turbocharger. The Grand National. It. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I wanted that, and then my wife, she didn't think I ought to have that. Well, pro I, probably for good reason, though. <laughs> I, I can imagine you probably would have been in jail with that yeah. car. That, and that, was, that was one of the fastest cars that GM ever come out yeah. with at that time. Yeah. Well, yeah, and it, it was... It was some of the stuff they were out running high-end cars with that, that oh, yeah. little thing. And the problem was with that car was Chevrolet didn't like their Corvette having competition within the company. So <laughs> yeah. they kept doing anything they could to not allow that to be yeah. fast. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I remember the, the Buick and the Buick was burnt orange, kind of the ugliest color you could probably found in that car, but it was a very unique color. But by the time I got the car, it, it had been through my sister a little bit and well, like, you loved it oh no i, I love my first car <laughs> the problem with that color was the color because if i did something stupid in town exactly. everybody knew who that was <laughs> doing stupid stuff in town and me and my buddy jim like we were always he had a little chevette and i had that car and 96 horsepower i remember that little car uh, and you going from these v8s to those little four cylinders had to be that probably was a little hard to get used to right yeah yeah it uh but you know, you got to do what you got to do in life. They, they just, uh, you know, you get older, you think, well, I want this and I want that. Well, hey, if you got a family, they didn't ask to come in this yeah, world, yeah. so you take care of your family. Oh, of course, of course. And that poor Buick, though, it had the, what was it, the aluminum heads on it yeah. that if it ever overheated, yeah. you were putting new heads on that thing. And I'll never forget, in the garage, like, like Dad here, he would help you work on something. If you were stupid enough, especially to break it, you would come out in the in the and sometimes it was just out in the driveway because we didn't have a garage for a long time. Yeah. So I remember watching him rebuild his his Silverado on the that, that on was, the patio, yeah. and it would be raining, and he'd pull that hood down, and you'd be under that thing, 
rebuilding that, which was crazy. But I remember the transmission. We kept blowing seals in that little Buick. Yeah. And we, me and you got to where we were a NASCAR crew with that thing because <laughs> I would he would sit there and make me do it. And if we were trying to figure something out, you would step in. But we got to where we could pull the front clip off that and get right to that transmission in probably 20 minutes yeah. or so. You remember when we got it fixed? We oh, yeah. that guy, and he says, I don't know what's wrong. He said, we already made the fix for that. Yeah, yeah. Took it home, or we fixed it. I guess he fixed it and never had a problem with it again. Did we not punch that seal in there, or did we have him do that? He did it all. That when, it, when it, he fixed that, when he made that part, he did it all, and then after that, it worked fine. Right. What was, what was, because how you're 80 now, right? Do I? You're 80 years old now, yeah. right? Um, so the the 90s to 2000s, kind of what were the things that stood out with you with cars? How did they change? And by the way, I'm 80, but if you want to drag, come over. <laughs> <laughs> but how have you seen how have you seen the last 20 years cars really just change? Well, at first, you could look at a car and tell what it was. Mm -hmm. Now you can't look at a car and tell yeah. what it was unless maybe you get around the front and look at the grill or something like that. Yeah, that's the only way. But back in my day it was like every person is different we yeah. don't all look alike yeah. well it was the cars that they didn't look alike and yep. that was part of the thing hey hey man look at my car it's slick man yeah. and and look at yours it looks like a dog you know well your personality your personality generally reflected yeah. the driving yeah. of the car you wanted yeah um so what was what have you seen though i know when i got my firebird in the 90s you liked that i kind of got a little little fun car like that yeah. and, and i remember you saying if there was a car even before i bought it if there because i knew he probably wanted to drive it because he would be like well if there was ever a car that new pontiac looks really really good yeah. and uh and i had i had too much fun in that thing but what was some of the things that what was a car that you've seen here in the past 10 15 years that you would have if you were a younger person, you would have bought the new Camaro. Yeah, uh, I'd like to have the new Camaro, and then I'd want want the uh, I'd want the big engine in it. Yeah, and uh, of course now they make them too big. Yeah, you know, really you, they do. Yeah. You can get the six cylinder over three hundred horsepower, and yeah. our, that was something in our day, you know. Well, I remember your truck, your your full size truck. I think was about a hundred and fifty or hundred and sixty horsepower from until I put the three fifty. Right, it. but from from the factory, yeah. and that was a big number back then. Yeah. And now, a lot of cars are well over three hundred horsepower that are just family sedans. Well, four cylinders now would would whip the V 8s back in those days. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. And by the way. The, the new, I got a terrain, and the new terrain has got a turbocharger on it. And if I ever get where I can, I want to have that terrain with that turbocharger. <laughs> um, you've seen trucks change over the years, too. Trucks yeah. have went from just being very utilitarian, like as a farm kid. They were farm trucks. That's all, you didn't think of, of that as the family no. cruiser. And now, trucks are really the, the, the luxury sedan. Yeah. They've my, changed. My 46 truck, I had a 46 Ford. And I didn't get to bring it down here because I didn't have the everything to, so I could do that. But now the 46 Ford, it's, it was even a Ford. <laughs> and But the 46 Ford I had, it had a, a flathead V8 in it and one thing or another. And it was, it was fun to drive. But I wanted to bring it down here and, and I was going to take the body off and all that stuff and redo it and put a 350 in it or mm -hmm. something. And uh, but I remember Jeff in, wanted that. Jeff wanted that real yeah. bad. Back in those days... The farmers all had old pickup trucks, and where I lived, there was a feed mill, and they'd come up, they get their truck at the feed mill, and they'd get their feed and all that stuff, and that's what a truck was for. Right. But uh, now we got four-door trucks and their family cars and everything yeah. else. Yeah, which, but, but a four-door truck, I'm sure you see, it's super practical. You can put your family in it, plus yeah. you got room to haul things, yeah. which... Which is funny because they used to do Suburbans and stuff back then, uh -huh. but nobody ever picked up on the fact that that was kind of uh, the early stages of a family SUV, but was they just expensive or? Well, they were, the Suburban was nice, but it wasn't cool. Yeah. It, it, and it's like they come out with station wagons. Mm -hmm. And with, man, I wouldn't have one of them station wagons, those kids would right, say. Right. You know, they look, they're some old family car and one thing or another. But Chevrolet did come out with, uh, I can't think what it was, but they had a fancy. They started in 55 at, I can't think of what the name of it was, but anyhow, they had a, a 55 and 56 and then 57 Nomad. Yeah. And, and uh, 
they were a fancy car. Now, a lot of kids bought them things, mm -hmm. but a lot, of the, a lot of the old farmers, they'd come to pick up their daughter to take them out, and they say, you ain't going out in that thing with <laughs> my daughter. Right, because, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's, there's definitely an ordinary side. Um, so so kind of, you're kind of at the point of your, like, probably buying new cars is probably, I'm assuming, out of the question really anymore, unless you just oh, had just because I can't afford it. Right. But what would be one right now that, as a practical, what would your, be your pick? Well, I, I like uh, the terrain, and I like uh, the, the Chevrolet Equinox. It's uh, something that you can use for more than just a car, but yet it's, not, it's a nice car. It's nice yeah. on the inside, and that would be probably what I want. You get good gas mileage, you get 30 miles a gallon with yeah. it. And so, therefore, that would be kind of like what me and Mary Lou would like. Right. Where, what, do you, what do you think about all these electric vehicles? They're, they're nice, but uh, I've got a question. If you run out of electricity, can you go up to the filling station and get you five gallons of it and bring it back and put it in your car and get right. it on Right. Oh, no, no. You've seen, there's, there's show like these tow stations are now bringing a generator out to kind of charge them up. But, um, I mean, the speed of them, though, like, would you have ever thought... Because you're going from yeah. a basic straight six cylinder as a kid, uh -huh. you know, with 120 horsepower, whatever they would yeah. have been, to now you get an electric vehicle with instantly a thousand horsepower, you stomp it, you can't, you're physically, they could go faster than your body can withstand. Yeah, you're, you've got four wheels of pulling. Yes. Got, and you've got a motor on all those four yeah. wheels. Would, uh, would you ever be curious to drive one of those? Oh, I'd like to drive one. That'd be, it'd be fun. Do you think it'd be weird that it'd be so quiet? Yeah, well, we get, uh, my friend's uh, neighbor's got a uh, Toyota, and it's uh, a hybrid. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said she loved the thing, and she pulled up, and she was talking to us and had the window down, and we were just sitting there talking. And I said, does this thing run quiet? And she said, it's on now. <laughs> <laughs> and you couldn't hear nothing. Right. And then I got a ride in the one that they make out in California, like where uh, uh, the Tiger... The old, upset and all that. Uh, the Tesla? The, they make them out there in California. I can't... Mm, I, I, but anyhow, uh, up in Nashville, we was going to a hockey game, and this guy was going to haul us in this Uber, and it was one of those cars, and it was so quiet, and I yeah. thought, wow. Uh, they, you didn't hear a sound. Yeah. You could talk, and you didn't have to talk loud. Right. And, uh, but that was nice. But you still can't go on a trip with them. Well, you, you can. People have done it. It just takes a lot longer. Well, yeah, if you step and you stop and you charge the thing up, it's going to take you a good while to get the oh, thing sure. charged up. Sure. I think the tech will, I think the tech will get there. I think yeah. we're still oh, yeah. kind of early in that. But if you don't do it now, yeah. you're never going to get the tech there because no, there's no reason to yeah. make them better. So I'm, uh, I'm wondering when they wreck, <clears throat> will them batteries ever explode? Uh, they do catch fire. Uh, they, right. they will catch I fire. We got burn up at one in Nashville. Yeah, and uh, so that part bothers me a little bit. And well, Dad, it's been fun having you here. Uh, there's a lot more stories we could break down some of these individual cars into hour-long stories because, especially if we get Jeff involved, we start talking about Jeff yeah. with with cars. My brother, who was a complete car nut. There um, you go. That was the interview with my father. He's an ordinary thing, and uh, I love him to death. But. Um, I plan on doing some more things like this uh, because I just I think this generation especially like they need to be documented, man. I think there's so many uh, we see so many what what modern TV says this generation is all about and their experiences, but yet I think when you uh, actually get a taste for their experiences, it's it's sometimes completely different. So whether it be two wheel drive, four wheel drive, or those hot rods that I would have loved to have driven, this has been your All Terrain Nation, and I'm your host David Boyd. We're out. Peace, everybody. Love y'all.